So this is a classic type of a ground to apex two-dimensional projectile motion problem. Uh, some object starts out with uh, 48 meters per second, 45 degree initial velocity vector and free falls uh, upward and beyond and uh, eventually stops somehow at the apex. This one plugs into a, a, a cactus or something like that. So it's a golf ball being launched on a golf, you know, it's called fairway. Um, of course, there is no cactus, there is no golf ball, there's nothing but a mathematical point in space, but we surround it with the exciting story of a golfer striking the cactus. Uh, the important part here is that what we're working with is the um, problem that starts out looking like this. is a, a velocity vector I've drawn here, and the path of the ball is parabolic, concave down, upward and beyond, eventually just striking the apex and stopping, or stop, striking the cactus at the apex. So I'm going to label this part as V0. That's the initial velocity vector. It's uh, 48 meters per second in length and directed at 45 degrees above the horizontal. And in order to solve this problem, we have to figure out um, how fast the object is going in the upward direction, what's the vertical component of velocity to start with. That's approximately you know, that long. And then also, what's the horizontal component of velocity? And the hor horizontal component is going to look something like this. So I'm going to write this one as v not in the y dimension. I'm not going to put the vector hat on top of that thing. I'm going to use pluses and minuses to show the direction. That'll be positive in direction. And then in the bottom here, I'll write this as uh, v not x. So let me just get rid of that segment there. I'll write this as v not in the x dimension. It's a vector, positive in direction. And just for simplicity, I'll just not write the vector notation there. All right, so let me clear that up a bit. And there's the golf ball in question. I'm really interested in the lengths of those red and blue uh, components of that diagonal velocity vector. So to really try to make it clear, what I'm going to do is pick up uh, pick up this portion of the velocity and move it right over here and force that to be a right triangle. And then I can use the rules of right triangle geometry or trigonometry to determine the lengths of those sides of the triangles. There's V0Y again. Uh, from what we talked about in class earlier today or earlier, I'm going to use um, simple rules here like v not y v not y is always going to be equal to the hypotenuse length v not not the vector quantity just the length of the hypotenuse that's 48 meters per second and this side of the triangle is so far away I need a sine to find it so v not sine theta now that can be calculated with um, 48 Point zero meters per second times the sine of 45 degrees. 5.0 degrees. I'm making an effort to put the three significant figures inside of there. So when I calculate this, pretending to make my calculator do its trick, I come with I come up with a um, 33.9 meters per second, 33.9 meters per second. And then that's simply just how fast the object was launched upward. And it becomes a one-dimensional motion problem from now on in the vertical dimension at initial velocity, 33.9 meters per second, accelerating at G. And I'll in a moment calculate the time it takes to get to the apex. And that before I do that, though, I'm going to also work in the horizontal dimension. So the question I'm going to ask myself is, what is the horizontal initial velocity? And so it turns out to be v naught x. Same rule, it's hypotenuse length times the trig function. And the, uh, the trig function I'm worried about here, oh, by the way, I should indicate what angle I'm talking about there. And that's the angle in question. Um, I'm looking for the length of the side close to the angle. So the close is the cos. And that's the form I'm going to use. And then let me make the pen a bit smaller and write inside of here about um, 
48.0 meters per second. This part I'm doing only as an instructional tool. You don't have to show this part. If you need to write it, go ahead and do so. Uh, 45 degrees. 45.0 degrees. And then I'm going to make that calculation. And luckily, in this particular example, because of the symmetry of the 45 degrees, the sine of 45 and the cosine of 45 had the same value. So the lengths of the sides of that right triangle have the same length. So it's again uh, 33.9 meters per second. 9 meters per second. That is to say, during the initial launch, the object is moving sideways at 33.9 meters per second. And that stays constant the entire time the free fall is occurring. So now that I've done the preliminary work of just decomposing that initial velocity vector, I'm going to shrink this diagram down and then start working out the details of the parts of the problem. Like in part A, it says predict, the, predict and calculate the time needed for the golf ball to reach the apex. That's purely a one-dimensional vertical motion problem. So I'll start out in the vertical Y dimension. Just listing out my initial conditions. Oh, there's the door. Hold on. So now I'm going to make the list of the initial conditions in the vertical dimension. And um, so I'll start at ground level. And I'm unsure how high the golf ball reaches. The initial velocity in the vertical dimension was that 33.9 meters per second. And at the apex, the apex position is defined to be when the vertical component of velocity reaches zero meters per second. That's a, a big concept to pay attention to right there. And then it's free falling, so the acceleration is negative in the direction downward, 9.8 meters per second each second. And the time is what we're looking for. So I'm going to try to identify the time without knowing anything about the vertical position. And that leads me to leads me to want to look to the equations of kinematics, and I'm going to choose um, the one that's independent of position. So that's the one I like. So let me write that down. V y, v not y, plus g t. And applying the rule. This is zero at the apex, so I'm going to notate this time to the apex. I could just say t sub a or something like that to remind myself that's specifically the apex time. So I get zero equals v naught y, which I already know is that 33.9 meter per second thing, uh, plus gt. I already know g. I'm just solving for the time to the apex. Subtracting v naught y from both sides. And then dividing by g, I reveal the time to the apex. So plugging and chugging, let's see here. Comes up with a value for the time to three significant figures. 3.46. And then I'll just put a little box around that thing and describe what it means. Time to the apex. And then the next step is to figure out what horizontal range did the object have while it was free falling to the apex. So let's see if we can do that. In the horizontal dimension, I'm going to make my list of initial conditions. I'm going to start the golf ball to start at zero meters. And I'm not sure where it free falls to in the horizontal dimension, that's what I'm solving for. And then in the horizontal velocities, the length of that blue vector is 33.9 meters per second. And all the way through, it's 33.9 meters per second going sideways because there's no forces accelerating it in the horizontal dimension. And then the time, I just figured that out a moment ago, is 3.46 seconds. 3.46 seconds. 
So the only thing I don't know is the horizontal position uh, to the apex. So then I'm going to look at this list of kinematics equations. And I'll choose, I think, um, there's so many to choose from. This is a good one, uh, because these two values are the same. And then when I add them together and divide by 1 half, take the average velocity, it's just the 33.9 meters per second. That's a good one. This one doesn't work so well because there's no position in it, so we eliminate that one from the list. Uh, this one has no time, so don't go for that one. Uh, this one works well, too, because there's no acceleration and x naught was 0, so I can just use that. And same for this one. Acceleration 0, x naught 0, so I can just use the final velocity or the initial velocity times time. I like those two. Personally, I think that's pretty cool. So I think what I'll do is just use um, the distance, x equals uh, vx times t. Now, admittedly, that's a little bit of a shortcut. I didn't actually start with you know, one of those, but I did. I mean, it's... Um, um, I'm bad. I'm a bad man for doing that, but I'm going to do that, and I'm going to encourage you to do that, too. This is essentially distance equals rate times time, for goodness sakes. Let's just start there if you can, okay? So uh, here we go. The final position equals, this is 33.9 uh, meters per second times 3.46 seconds, and as a result, we come up with 117 meters, 117 meters to three significant figures. That's one of my nice answers. I'm going to call that um, range to apex. Range to apex. All right, so in part C, I'm going to try to predict and calculate the golf ball's maximum height during free fall all the way up to the apex. So I'm looking back here, the initial vertical positions again, that's the one I'm looking for, is the final height. So I'm going to look quickly at my kinematics equations. And what I'm thinking about is um, I could use um, I could use this one because that's the final height I'm looking for, and I have all the other variables. I could use this one, the big dog displacement equation. It's a nice one. I could use this one because there's the final height I'm looking for. It's independent of time and has this term, which is equal to zero. So um, I think I'll do that. I think it's simpler uh, to use the squared velocity equation. So let me just copy that down and use it. How about um, y equals... Let me start that again. So starting with the squared velocity equation, I recognize that at the apex, the final y component of the velocity is zero. I'm starting from the ground level, so um, just cleaning up the algebra, as I recommend you do as you're learning to write symbolically. Uh, I'm going to subtract v naught from both sides, v naught squared. And next I'll divide both sides by 2g. So I get v naught y squared all over 2g equals y. And in the end, y, if I take um, the 33.9 squared and then divide by 2 times negative 9.81, the negative sign here will cancel with the negative sign there. And as a result, I'll get a, a maximum height of about 58.8 meters. There we go. And I'll write that here as a height at apex and then in part D, predict and calculate the ball's velocity at the apex just before striking the cactus. That's a concept. Um, the concept would be right up here at the apex, the velocity is still the blue horizontal component of velocity, and the red component of the velocity that was there was started out really tall, and then it shrunk and shrunk and shrunk and shrunk and shrunk and shrunk and shrunk until it finally went away at the apex. So the velocity at the apex is just the x component of the velocity that it started with. So v apex, let me get back in there again, v uh, velocity at the apex 
I'm making sure it's a vector quantity because I don't want the speed but the velocity. It's equal to v naught x. Now, this symbol is a one-dimensional vector whose direction is shown with the plus and minus sign. So I'm just going to write down here positive in direction. Well, you know what? I'm going to be even more clear than that. I'm going to write down 33.9 meters per second is the speed, and then the direction is at zero degrees, perfectly at zero degrees. No significant figure issue there, just right on the positive x-axis, zero degrees. So that's a concept. It'll always be that way for these ground to apex problems. And um, I'll write that as velocity at the apex. And then um, the next part of the problem says, state the golf ball's acceleration at the apex just before striking the cactus. So while it's still free falling, and of course, any object in free fall has just one acceleration. The acceleration, the vector for acceleration, which is a, a linear combination of the x component of acceleration plus the y component of acceleration. This part is zero in free fall, so the total acceleration is just the y part there. And that's a very you know, complicated way of saying the acceleration at the apex is equal to um, g which is 9.8 meters per second squared. And then if you put a negative sign there, I would be okay with that because it's just in one vertical dimension, but I'm going to try to spice it up a little bit. I'm going to put uh, at 90 degrees, at negative 90 degrees or at 270 degrees. Ooh, what do you think of that? Straight down, straight down. I'll put a box around this big old thing there, call that. So to create the graphical space here, let's see, I'll do it like this, we can put them, put them here, he says confidently, almost, alright, there we go, so the graphs, what it looked like here. Uh, I'm going to draw them like this. Um, the x component parts are the easiest part for me to think about because they're so simple. The, um, the x component of acceleration is simply zero. And I'm just going to draw it like a horizontal line here. I'm going to get rid of that arrowhead. Think of it like that. So it's just a horizontal line right on the time axis. That's what I should be drawing there, right on the time axis. And then um, the x component of the velocity is constant. And then the position changes. Uh, equal distances and equal times, a nice linear function there. And for vertical acceleration, there's the downward negative g. And then the um, velocity start very positive at the 33.9 and then go down to 0 again. So that's at the apex, it goes to zero. And then the position function should um, go up and just burr, and become horizontal at the apex. And as far as I'm aware, that's the solution to problem number three. What I'd like you to do is to consider the solution, the concepts inside of it, and then apply it to the workbook problem number four. And the theory is you'll master these uh, ground to apex problems. Pay particular attention to the decomposition part of that initial velocity vector, and then once you got that down, it's simply a uh, two one-dimensional motion problems. Good luck.